chapter 55. With a bucket of black paint, Lee Cherie went up to the attic. She blacked out the windows, except for one small pane in the east. Into the overhead fixture, she screwed a 40-watt bulb. She cleared out the royal dressmaking dummy, Christmas tree decorations, and trunks of monogrammed junk. She moved into a chamber pot. She moved in a chamber pot and a cot. The cot had a foam rubber mattress, and the pot would be emptied by Julietta twice a day. Julietta, also twice daily, would bring in a plate of food. Starchy food, ordered Lee Cherie. I want to eat like he eats. In vain, the king and queen tried to reason with her. It's no wonder people lack romance in their lives, said the princess. Love belongs to those who are willing to go to extremes for it. Goodbye. Tilly and Max listened to the attic door slam. To Max, the door sounded like the crack of a bat when the opposition has hit a home run to beat the Mariners in the bottom of the ninth. His heart, which would never win another pennant, cracked a tiny bat of its own. Oh, oh, spaghetti -o, said Tilly. She did not elaborate. Briefly, they discussed seeking professional help for the princess, but King Max was one of those who believed that psychology was at that point in its development that surgery was at when it was practiced by barbers, so the idea was abandoned. Max put his arm halfway around his wife. Halfway was as far as he could reach, and they walked out on the porch and stared at the blackberries. The blackberries, if little else in the last quarter of the 20th century, except killer bees and Arabs, were on the move. Here, it might be worth mentioning that Bernard Mickey Wrangle, while in agreement with the king's opinion of the profession of psychology, had developed a psychological test of his own. It was short, simple, and to the mind of its creator, infallible. To administer the test, merely ask the subject to name his or her favorite beetle. If you are at all familiar with the distinct, separate public images of the four beetles, then you'll recognize that the one chosen John, Paul, George, or Ringo reveals as much about the subject's personality as most of us will ever hope to know.